This is the white-nosed coati, or Nasua narica. It's the most social animal of the procyanid family, which includes raccoons, ringtails, and kinkajous, so basically all of the cutest arboreal mammals. If you visit certain national parks and tourist sites between southern Mexico and Costa Rica, you'll notice bands of coatis begging for food, or sometimes even stealing it outright. It's well known that feeding wild animals can make them dependent on humans, but did you know it also might actually change their social structures? One 2019 study of a white-nosed coati population in Tepoztlan, Mexico investigated how coatis form dominance hierarchies, and how tourism might be changing these relationships. Social order can be measured by observing conflicts between individuals, and noting the outcome of the interaction, looking at who runs away and who gets to eat the food. Individuals who win more fights have a higher social rank. Coatis normally eat insects and fruit, which are relatively abundant resources that are difficult to defend. As a result, the band in Tepoztlan showed a network of semi-stable relationships which were relatively malleable and subject to change. These changes could actually be seen throughout the year. Researchers recorded increased aggression and less consistent patterns of dominance during the mating and nesting seasons until new cubs properly joined the band. Just like us, Kawadi teenagers are rebellious and unstable. The age, sex, and physical size of each individual had no real impact on the fights, although females ranked the highest among the band and males the lowest. The only factor which directly influenced where a Kawadi placed in the social order was the size of the adult young group which they belonged to. Adult young group here is used instead of family, as it was difficult to know if every member of the group was actually related. This is because Kawadis are plural breeders, meaning multiple breeding females coexist and often raise the same young, while each female can have up to six cubs per season. This makes it very difficult to create a strict familial hierarchy and contributes to their egalitarian nature. So, as you can see, animals like Nasu and Narika have complex social structures just like our own, defined partially by their biological limitations and partially by the environment around them. This is important to consider when you feed wild animals. In this study, 20% of all coati feces sampled contained human food. A higher human presence was also associated with more conflicts and increased aggression. What this shows is that coati social structure is a delicate balance which naturally fluctuates and is highly susceptible to change. So, if you see a coati in the wild, don't give in to their adorable begging. You're not just making them dependent on unhealthy, processed foods, but actively reshaping the network of relationships which sustains their populations and role in the environment.